Hello. Um, today I'm going to talk about the uh, or continue on the video lesson with balancing equations. In the last video lesson, I kind of gave you the background of why we balance equations. And what we're, the point is, we're looking for the number of atoms to be the same on both sides of the the reaction, on the reactant side and our product side. Okay. So in this video, I'm just going to go right into just doing some um, general uh, balancing of equations. So I have a couple here for you. All right, so if you want to, you can uh, stop the video if you'd like and pause it and try to balance this on your own if you have a, if you feel like you got a pretty good idea on how to balance, okay? If not, watch the first one and then you can pause it for the second one and try to, to balance that one and then watch the, the video and kind of see if you're doing okay. So here's the strategy I do. What I'll do is I'll cut this reaction in half so I have my reactants and my products separated. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the elements, so carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay, so those are the three elements that I have. Now, again, with a chemical reaction, we are not changing the atoms. We are keeping the atoms the same. What we're doing is rearranging them and breaking bonds and reforming bonds. And that's what I was showing you with that water in that last reaction. So what I'm trying to say here is if you have carbon here, you better have carbon on the other side. Okay, you can't not you can't lose hydrogen, you can't lose carbon, you can't lose oxygen, and you can't create atoms. There's no atoms being created in a chemical reaction. They're just changing their positions. Okay, they're changing their their uh, bonds that hold them together. Okay. All right, so I'm going to add up the number of carbons I have on this side. I have two. Okay, from here I have five hydrogens and another one over here, so I have a total of six hydrogens in this compound. Now oxygen is separated into two substances. So I have two oxygens here and another one for a total of three oxygens. On my product side I have one carbon and I have two hydrogens and I have three oxygens. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start using coefficients and this is the only thing you can do now is use coefficients to balance. You cannot change the subscripts on the, on the formulas. Because you can't change, we know that carbon dioxide is created, we cannot change that, we can't lose that. So all I can do is put numbers here, and as I put a number here, that tells me how many of these compounds I have. So if I throw a 2 here, that means I have 2 of these molecules. So therefore I have 4 in, in the what, 12 and 2 oxygens. All right. So I'm going to start with carbon. Notice hydrogen and oxygen are everywhere. One rule I would recommend you follow is to leave hydrogen and oxygen for the end. Okay. All right, so I'm going to balance my carbon first. To balance the carbon, I need to get two on both sides. So I'm going to throw a two right here to balance that. So what that means is that I have two of these carbon dioxides. Okay, that's the, what that means. So total, you don't have to do this every time, but I just want you to get an idea what the two means. It means that I have two of these CO2s. So therefore, I now have two carbons, and now I have to change my oxygens. And this happens all the time. Don't be freaked out because... These are balanced, and now you're going to dis you know, you're going to disturb it. It's it's okay. It happens. So I distribute the two. That means I have four oxygens plus one. That gives me a total of five. Okay. Make sure when you put a number here that you change all the elements that are that have a that, that are going to be affected by that coefficient. All right. So now my carbon is balanced. So now I can balance the hydrogens or I can balance the oxygens. Now the little tip here. Second tip. Notice that the oxygens by itself here right? If I were to balance my oxygens, okay, and then I try to balance my hydrogens by putting a coefficient here or here, I'm going to disturb and change my carbons and my oxygens, and I'll change out. I don't want to do that. By balancing the hydrogens first, I can then come back and balance oxygen right here without changing any of the other coefficients. If that doesn't make any sense. It will once you get more experience doing these. So I have a six here. I need a six on this side. So therefore, I should put a three here, I'm not going to write these all out, but that would be three water molecules. Each molecule has two hydrogens, so that's a total of six. So now I have to add up my carbon, I'm sorry, my oxygens. I still have four oxygens here, plus I have three on this side. So that gives me a total of seven. Okay. So on this side, I have to get this oxygen to be a seven. I don't want to put a number here. I put a number here, I'm going to change carbon and hydrogen, and I'm going to go through this big roundabout, you know, I'll, I'll never be able to balance it kind of thing. It, it's just very frustrating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a number here. Now, remember that I have to add the two oxygens together, don't I? So I have to put a number here that will multiply by 2 and then add to the 1, right? So I want, it, I want that all to equal 7. So therefore, if I have 1 over here, what do I really want this to equal? 
I'd like it to equal 6. I hope you kind of, you know, saw that. So by putting a 3 here, that's going to give me 6 oxygens, plus one more oxygen here, makes that 7. So now I have the same number of atoms on both sides of the reaction. My reaction is balanced, and I can then confirm that the law of conservation of mass has been upheld. What that means is if I added up the carbon's mass, hydrogen mass, and oxygen mass, and I did the same thing on this side, those two masses would be exactly the same. And that's the law of conservation of mass. And that's why we balance, because of that law of conservation of mass. All right, so I'm going to balance this one. If you want to pause it right now, you're welcome to do that. And by pausing, you can try to figure it out yourself. And then if you can't do it, watch the video. And, you know, whatever, you get the idea. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and potassium, okay, hydrogen, and oxygen. One potassium, two hydrogens, one oxygen. Potassium, I'm going to keep these in order, by the way. Keep them in order so that they're all, it's easier to compare. Don't, don't just follow the order up here, okay. My potassium is one. My hydrogen is three. My oxygen is one. All right, so if I'm going to go ahead and balance, I'm going to start with have to put coefficients in here. All right. So, potassium's okay. Oxygen's okay. My hydrogen is off. All right. So, I've got to get these hydrogens to balance. Well, I got three on this side, and I've got two on this side. So, if you kind of see the way this is going to work out, I have two here and one here. If I put a two here, wouldn't that make my hydrogen a two and a two and make it a four? Right? Okay. Now, as I do that, my potassium then also becomes a 2 and my oxygen becomes a 2. Don't forget to change the other elements in there. Don't just change the one you're focusing on. Now, I come back over here. If I put a 2 here, I can then make my hydrogen 4. And then my oxygen becomes 2. And my potassium is still 1. So in order to fix that, I throw a 2 here. My potassium is balanced. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's balancing equations. It's just a matter of trial and error. Um, so just, you know, don't get frustrated. Just if you get lost, if you get confused, some of them can be tricky. Just start over and, and try to approach it differently. Notice in this one I started with hydrogens. Over here I started with carbons. Well, if that didn't work, I would just start with another element. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're balancing. Don't get frustrated. Just, just do your best. Okay, one last one I'm going to show you, and then I'm going to end the video. Um, this one can get a little complicated because there's some little trick I'll show you when you can ba to balance this one. All right, so nitrogen, one, hydrogen, three, oxygen, two. Nitrogen, one, hydrogen, two, oxygen, two. Two oxygens here, two hydrogens and nitrogens. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw the coefficients in here to balance. Nitrogen's good, oxygen's good, so I have to focus on the hydrogens. All right, so I got three here and two here. So I'm going to use the least common multiple put a three there, make that a six, so three oxygens and four, so I got four oxygens on this side. I'm going to throw a two over here to balance my hydrogens to make that a six, and that gives me two nitrogens. All right, so now my nitrogens are good, I'm sorry, not my hydrogens are good, now my nitrogens and, our ox and oxygens are all off. All right, so I'm going to stay away from oxygen. The reason I stay away from oxygen is that it's all over the place. I'm just going to stay with the nitrogens. And I'm going to throw a 2 in here. So now my nitrogens are balanced. I have two oxygens, and I have three. So two oxygens over here and three here. That's going to give me a total of five oxygens. All right, now here's where things can get a little crazy. I, can, I, I don't want to move any of the other coefficients because everything else is balanced. I really want to put something right here to balance the oxygens. But the problem is, whatever this number is, let's say it's x, okay? That number x is going to have to be multiplied by 2, and what do I want it to equal? 5, right? So if I want to solve for x, what does x have to be? 5 halves, right? So what I could do is I can come up here and say, okay, x has to be 5 halves. But the problem with that is that that's not really appropriate because I can't have five halves of oxygen. So what I have to do is I have to get rid of that half. It's kind of a little tricky. You can't really keep it this way. What you're going to do is I'm going to double everything. So if I double this, this becomes a four. I double this, this becomes a five. If I double this, it becomes a four. If I double this, it becomes a six. 
and now I have everything balanced. Four nitrogen, four nitrogen, 12 hydrogen, 12 hydrogen, 10 oxygen, four of them here, and six of them here, and I get a balanced equation. If you need to watch that again, go ahead, but that's, and I'll explain this trick again if you have in, in class if you still have questions on it. Um, but it's a little tip, a little way to kind of, you know, sidestep and try to alleviate the balancing, and sometimes the halves can be pretty helpful. All right, so that's balancing equations. We'll try working on these in class, and I'll see you later.